Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you here today on what the world needs is Jesus. I trust that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today. If you don't, I just, I just urge you to go ahead and get right with God. That way you can enjoy the rest of the broadcast. Because, my friend, I tell you what, we got a good broadcast for you today. I just want to say before we get started, though, that I really appreciate Brother Larry for taking care of the service last week. Me and, uh, me and Brother Ricky had to be out. We, we had to go to Birmingham for some checkups and stuff. But you know what? God's good. Good. Everything's good. Brother Larry come right on in here and took care of everything and got it all took care of. And I appreciate him. Let me say also, I appreciate all these that help us here on the broadcast. I got uh, Brother Tobin Phillips. He's uh, Brother Ricky's son. Hey Amen. He, he he does all of our uh, network stuff and all that stuff, all of our, all of our uh, uh, you know, behind the screen stuff. Him and him and Sister Sharon, my wife, uh, she does the, the Facebook thing, puts on the Facebook stuff and all that. And, uh, Brother Brother Tobin, he takes care of the, the videos and all yeah. that. I, we appreciate those. Yes. You know what? It takes everybody yes, it uh, doing what they do to make it work. Amen. And, uh, you know, everybody's not preachers. Everybody's not singers. You know, everybody's not prayer warriors. You know, you know we've got some, we got some that's this and some that's that. But you know what? It takes all of us coming together. Yeah. Yeah, glory to God, and we can just make it work. I mean, we can bring a program to you to tell somebody about Jesus, somebody that loves you, amen, and that is Jesus Christ the righteous. I mean, Jesus loves you and cares about you today and wants to know, amen. Hey, you know what? Jesus wants you to bring your problems to him. No matter how big, no matter how little. Jesus wants you to bring his problems. If you'd like to find us on the web, you can find us on Facebook.com. What the world needs is Jesus. Also, you can find us on YouTube. You to, uh, go to WOLW's video playlist and look up uh, what the, just find what the world needs is Jesus there, and you can find us there. We're also on Twitter.com, World with Jesus. Yes. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at worldwithjesus at gmail.com. That's worldwithjesus at gmail.com. Friend, I trust that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you don't, I want to urge you, find you an altar, call upon the name of the Lord, and now we want you to worship with Brother Ricky as he comes around and brings the word. Yes. Brother Ricky. Hey man, thank you, brother Ronnie. Just like to say, I love the Lord this morning. I'm glad to be here, and glad you're here, glad you're watching. Hey man, I hope you, I hope you know Jesus today. If you don't, you know what? I just woke up this morning, just excited, brother Larry. Just excited about just knowing Jesus. Hey man, I, I just woke up and just wanted to start praising Him. I went in my den and just started praising God this morning. Hey man. I love him this morning, I, and I was just thinking about the miracles that he does in our lives, amen, that we don't even think about, we don't even give it a second thought, but they're miracles, amen. I've got a miracle in my life, we just went and had my checkups last week, amen, that's a miracle to me, God saved my life, amen, he saved my life, he gave me a heart transplant, glory to God. And he saved my life, amen, and I was just thinking when we were sitting in that doctor's office, that, that doctor came in there and they said, they said, it's been 22 years since you've had that transplant. They said, we haven't had anybody in here that's got no better blood work, no better arteries, no better oh, anything man. than you've got, and you've been out 22 years. I just praise God yeah, this morning. God. Amen. I just love the Lord this morning yeah. for helping me through all that. And you've got a miracle, and I know you do, glory to God, and it's all because of God. Amen. Amen. God loves you today, and he wants you to be saved, and he wants you to come to a, to a place called heaven, glory to God. He wants you there with him, amen? I love the Lord this morning, amen. I want to read a few scriptures today from Genesis chapter 37, starting in verse 7, amen? It says, For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, amen? And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made a, 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 a obeisance to my sheep. Yeah. And his brethren said, and his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his works. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren, He said, I behold. I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me, 
And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I, thy mother and thy brethren, indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee on the earth? And his brethren envied him, amen, and his father observed the saying, amen. His father observed what he had dreamed, amen. Now Jacob loved Joseph more than he loved his brothers, amen. And, and his brothers hated him because of that, amen. They wouldn't even talk right to him, amen. They just didn't like him, amen. And Joseph tells them this dream that where the, the, the fields were binding their sheaves and, and they uh, uh, arose and stood upright and his sheaves stood around in obeisance to his. Now, now let's think about that a minute. Glory to God. I'd probably be saying, I, I don't know about all that now. I don't know about all that. What what you trying to say? And his brother said, what are you trying to say? Are you... You trying to say you're going to reign over us? Is that what you're trying to say? You're going to have dominion over us? Come on now. Amen. They hated him even more, glory to God. Amen. What would you say if your brothers and sisters come up and said, Hey, I'm, I've had this dream and I'm going to reign and have dominion over you. Amen. What would you think? You know, I'd probably say, You're right. That is a dream. Just keep right on dreaming. Amen. That's probably what we would do. Amen. But Joseph had another dream. Amen. He had another dream. And he told them the sun and the moon and the eleven stars would have would would make, be made obeisance to me. Amen. Yep. Now he really he really made them mad this time. His father rebuked him. Even his father rebuked him, saying, "In in this dream shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed bow down ourselves unto thee unto the earth." <laughs> Amen. Now his brothers was just furious. Amen. They're, after this dream, he comes and tells them they're furious. They're mad. The father. But the Father still observes what he says. Amen. Amen. I believe the Father knows there's a little bit more to these dreams than just trying to make them mad. Amen. I believe the Father observed them because he knows there's a little bit more to it. Amen. But now the brothers, on the other hand, they don't, they don't go for that. Amen. They're mad. Amen. And, and the Father sends the brothers off to feed the flock. Well, then he sends Joseph after that to go check on them, amen. He sends him to go check on the flocks and check on the brothers, make sure they're doing all right, amen. When the brothers saw Joseph coming, they already hated him now. They saw him coming, amen. They start conspiring. They start trying to figure out a way to get rid of him, amen. That when they seen him afar off, their, their minds are already working, amen. Start trying to figure out a way to get rid of their problem, amen. So they cast him into a pit, amen. Now the brothers sold Joseph. They cast him in that pit and the, 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 the Ishmaelites come by and they sold him to the Ishmaelites in, into slavery, amen. And they told the father, they said the beast come by and uh, got Joseph, said they, they cut his coat up of many colors that his father had given him. Yep. Cut one of the goat's heads and, 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 and poured the blood on the coat and made it look like that a beast had come by and got Joseph, amen, and that's what they told the father. Amen, they made it look bad, amen, and the Israelites sold Joseph on down in Egypt. They took him on down to Egypt and sold him to a man named Potiphar, amen, which is an officer of Pharaoh, a captain of the guard, amen. Now, the Lord was with Joseph, and, and Joseph was a, was a prosperous man, amen, and, and he, he was in the house of Potiphar, Amen. And Potiphar, him and Potiphar had, had become pretty close friends, had become, you know, they'd got together and Potiphar liked him and, yeah. and they had just got together there, amen. And, and he put all that he had into, into his hands, amen. And the Lord blessed him, the Lord blessed all of them on account yeah. of Joseph, amen. Yeah, come on, come on. Glory to God. Things are, things are going good, amen. Joseph, now Joseph lets, let's, Joseph, things are going good for Joseph, amen. So, so let's take a look now at, at what's, what's happened, amen. Joseph's brothers hated him. They wanted to get rid of him. So they sold him into slavery to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him again to Potiphar. Amen. He gets with Potiphar. Now things start going good, amen. Things start looking up, amen. That's the way it is with us, amen. We get out of one valley. Things start looking good, amen. Things are looking up. Things are going strong. 
Oh, devil, suddenly that old devil, he hits us right in the head again, amen. He's right there on his job because he's after us, glory to God. He wants to take us down. He don't want us to feel good, amen. He wants to, he wants to take that joy right out of our hearts, amen. But you know what? The devil can't take something he didn't give you, amen. Jesus gave me my joy, amen, and Jesus will give you your joy, glory to God. I love the Lord today, amen. John chapter 15, verse 11 these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. Amen. This is Jesus now. My joy might remain in you that my joy, that your joy might be full. Amen. If you don't get your joy from Jesus, amen, that old devil might can take it away from you. But I got mine from Jesus and he ain't taking mine, glory to God. I'm going to keep it forever. Amen. James said in chapter 1, verse 2, he said, My brethren... Count it a joy, count it a joy when you fall into divers temptations, amen. When that devil comes against you, amen, he's throwing all them fiery darts at you. Just count it a joy, amen, just count it a joy. Because if you're with Jesus, if you got Jesus in your heart, you're on the winning side, glory to God. You're going to win. In the end, you're going to win, amen. It, it don't matter what the devil tells you, glory to God, you're on the winning side, amen. Everything's going good for old Joseph. Here comes old devil again, amen. I believe the devil starts using Potiphar's wife, amen. Boy, do you believe the devil can use people? I believe he can. I believe he uses people every day. And he'll use people that's close to you too, amen. If, if somebody will let them, amen. If somebody will let them, he'll, he'll get right in there and he'll use them right against you, amen. Now, I believe, I believe old Potiphar's wife, she had a sweet tooth for old Joseph. Amen. She was after Joseph. The Bible says in Genesis 39 7, it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. Oh, watch out. Amen. And he said, she said, lie with me. Amen. We all know what that means. Amen. She was after old Joseph. Amen. But Joseph knew, amen, Joseph was a good, he was a good and well favored man and he refused to do anything with her. Amen. Not just one time. Yeah. She didn't stop it just one time. She kept on and two or three times, and he just kept refusing to have anything to do with her, amen. But you know what that does? That whenever, whenever that happens, it just makes the other one mad. You know what? It just makes them mad, and then they start, they're, they're, just like the brothers, their mind starts turning, glory to God, and they start wanting to get you back, wanting to do something to you, amen. So she goes and tells Potiphar, amen, that Joseph tried to lay with her, amen. She goes and turns the whole thing around, makes it look like Joseph wanted to lie with her, so Potiphar throws him in jail, amen? She, she's betrayed old Joseph, and Potiphar throws him in jail, amen? Long about here, most of us, amen, we'd start complaining. We'd be at old complaining, why, why am I in jail, amen? I'm following you, Lord, why am I in jail, glory to God? That's what we do, where's God? What's going on, amen? Why am I in this mess? Glory to God, amen. Joseph didn't say a word, though. Joseph didn't say a word, amen. He just kept right on going. He just kept letting God handle his situation. Amen. amen. He, he just, the, the jailer found favor in Joseph. Things start turning around again, amen. Potiphar, Potiphar dies, and Joseph is still in jail, amen. So things, are, things look bad for Joseph, but he don't, he don't care, amen. Thank, he just keeps following God, amen. He just keeps following the lead of Jesus, amen. Joseph interpreted dreams, amen. Now Pharaoh, amen, had a dream no one could interpret, amen. They, they get Joseph, and Joseph comes along. He, he comes up there and interprets the dream for old Pharaoh, amen. Now, now how quickly things turn around, Joseph is made ruler over Egypt now, amen, because he, he helps the, the uh, Pharaoh out. He interprets the dreams, and, and, and he, they're, they're, they've made him a ruler over Egypt, yeah, amen. On, now, I want to note, I want you to notice right here, Joseph has went from living with his father, mm -hmm. living with his family, amen, to being sold into slavery, being sold again to Potiphar, yeah. being betrayed by Potiphar's wife, Amen. Now he's the ruler of Egypt. Amen. Boys, this man's life, it just goes up and down. Up, but, but you know what? If you follow that story, he just keeps right on following God's lead. Amen. He just stays right with him. And God just keeps right on taking care of him. Amen. 
when we go through life, it's not always a bed of roses. Amen. That's the way it works with us too. It's, it's not always a bed of roses, glory to God. It's not always glory, glory, happy-go-lucky, amen. Things bad happen to you, amen. But just because you're a Christian don't eliminate you from things happening. Amen. Things right. not, not happening good to you all the time, amen. That don't mean you're exempt from problems and trials and, and old things of this world, amen. amen. We're, we're going to go through things just like Joseph did. Amen. His brothers, his own brothers sold him into slavery, amen. That's what started the whole thing with Joseph. But the Lord was with Joseph through the whole ordeal, amen. Yes, the, the Lord was with him. Joseph let God take care of his situation. He followed as God led. Even though he went through all these things, he stayed with God and came out on the other side victorious, yes, amen. If you're with Jesus, if you stay with Jesus, amen, you're going to come out on, it's not an if or maybe or I might, you will come out on the victorious side, amen. Glory to God. Well, I love the Lord today, amen. His brothers had to come to Egypt for food because of the famine in the land, amen. They didn't even know Joseph had become a ruler in Egypt, amen. They didn't even know they would have to talk to Joseph for the food, amen. But they came, and in Genesis 45, Verse 4, it says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray thee. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold. In, don't, don't that sound familiar? He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into, slave, into Egypt. Amen. Now, the Bible says they were, they were troubled at his presence. They were troubled because they seen Joseph and seen they, the last time they seen him, they had thrown him in a pit and sold him, amen? Now he's, now he's the ruler of Egypt, and they're asking him for food, amen? Ain't that something? Ain't that, that's my God right there. That's how my God works for everybody, amen? Glory to God. Now, therefore, not, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life, amen? Because... Because of Joseph going through all that he had went through, amen, the things that he, that, that things he had to live through, amen, now he's there to save their lives, amen. Does that not sound familiar? Does that not sound like Jesus, amen? That's the way it works, amen. God just uses you and uses people to turn everything around, amen. For I, I was in, when I was sitting in that doctor's office, I thought 22 years you know, back whenever that first happened to me 22 years ago, I couldn't see 22 years in the future, but God could. God seen me standing up here telling somebody about Jesus, amen. But, but I couldn't see 22 years later, but God can. And he knew I would be up here telling somebody about Jesus, amen. And I'm so glad he can see in the future. I'm so glad he can see ahead way further than me or you either one can, amen. I just thank God for that, amen. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring or harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a prosperity in the earth, and to save your lives by the great deliverance, amen. It, it ended up Joseph saving their lives, amen. They sold him and they was mean to him and it, it's just unreal that they all this happened to him and he ended up saving their lives, amen. If you don't know Jesus today, glory to God, this is the time. Right now is the time. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait for 30 minutes. Wherever you're at right now, if you don't know Jesus, just ask him in your heart, amen. Just ask him in your heart and he'll come to you, glory to God. He wants to save you. God wants every man to be saved, amen. I love the Lord today and I thank you for listening. Now worship with Shantae as she brings us a song. I'm not super lucky I'm in this by design Salvation for my soul Was God's idea, not mine So a lamb was slain And blood was spilled Before the world were framed 
to purchase my salvation to curse sin's guilt and shame i've been blood bought i've been mercy sought and when i'm stumbled in the arms of love i was caught i've been hell fought but i've been truth taught and i know that i can make it because i'm blood bought I've been blood bought, I've been mercy sought, and when I've stumbled in the arms of love, I was caught. I've been hell fought, but I've been truth taught, and I know that I can make it because I'm blood bought. Three men hung on crosses upon Mount Calvary, one chose condemnation chose cleansing but on the middle cross with the crown of thorns hung the hope of liberty and when he cried it is finished the death was paid for me i've been blood bought i've been mercy sought and when i stumbled in the arms of love i was caught i've been hell fought but i've been truth taught I know that I can make it cause I'm blood bought. I've been blood bought. I've been mercy sought. When I stumbled in the arms of love, I was caught. I've been hell bought, but I've been truth taught. And I know that I can make it cause I'm blood bought. And I know that I can make it because I'm blood Woo! Praise the Lord God most high. Boy, I'm telling you what, that is good. Thank you, Shante Dalton. Thank you so much for being and see these singers, these gospel singers, they're anointed and, and they do what they're called to do and, and they do it for a reason. The reason they do that is, you see, gospel music has, it will build you up, lift you up, steer you up, and cheer you up. Yes, sir. yeah. Amen. You have a choice today of how you want to feel. Yeah, you do. Yes, you say, well, no, I can feel depressed. You can. You can feel down and depressed and hurt and broken. What somebody done to me? Look at Joseph. Joseph had a choice. Yeah. He could have laid up and said, no, I'm just, I'm no count worthless. He was right, but he didn't. Just like with the gospel music, those people are anointed to sing and to play music and to do the gospel and the work of God. Now, I'm going to tell you what, that message that, just, that Brother Ricky just preached, yes. son, fat don't turn you on, you woods wet. Yeah. Now, I'll just tell you, listen, listen, does that not sound like some of us today, Joseph? We may not have been sold into slavery and thrown in a pit, but have we been treated like that? Uh -huh. Have we been treated that way? Have, have we been talked about and lied on? And, and Come on now, stay with me. Uh -huh. Is that happened to some of us? What yeah. are we going to do uh -huh. today? What yeah. kind of choice have we got today? Will we forgive them or will we get up and go, but my God, I'm going forward? Thank you, Isn't that good? We've got a choice, Brother Ricky, Brother Ronnie. We've got a choice. I choose Jesus. Do you understand? I want you, I ask you this morning, this very day, this very hour, choose Jesus. Take a moment and say, Lord, come into my life and be my Savior. I'm going to live for you forevermore. You know, last week I taught on faith, and I say that to say this. I'm going to teach a little bit more on faith today. Yeah, come on. It took faith. God gave us faith to get saved. Yes, we had to have faith, you understand, to believe that when we called on somebody we've never heard or seen and asked him to come into our life and be our Savior and guide us and lead us and direct us, what kind of faith do you think that took now? Yeah, come on. That took a tremendous amount of faith to do this and go, Jesus, I don't know if you're real, but if you're real, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I trust you. Yeah. You just got saved. Amen. Now, what will happen, see, God confirmed that faith immediately because you felt, I know you did because you can't get saved without it. You felt the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ flood your whole body. Amen. 
Boy, you just got so happy and you got on fire. I'm telling you what, you was the happiest creature on earth. Yeah. It's that faith that God immediately planted a measure into you that helped you and caused you to say, Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, amen. Now, last week we were on Hebrews. Let's go back to Hebrews 1.11, or excuse me, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, if I miss it, I'm sorry, but I, I'm going to pick up right here. We're going to go back to the verse 1. Let's just read this. I love to read the Word. Listen, i got to stop and tell you. Listen, when you're down, when you're depressed, when doubt and unbelief comes in, when, like Brother Ricky said, when that devil attacks you or he uses people to attack you, I don't know what to do. Stop and pick up the Word. Yes, sir. Amen. Just listen to me. Listen, I'm telling you from experience. Stop and pick up the word and open it up and begin to read. Don't know where to read. I'll tell you, well, you can start in the beginning. <laughs> or you can go to Psalms or go to John, go to the Gospel of John. Yeah. Go, I, go to the book of Psalms and begin to read the book of Psalms and you'll find joy, peace, and rest yes, and comfort yeah, on, because Lord. Brother David in there, that King David, among others, he began to tell what kind of God he served. <laughs> He served a God. We serve a God today that's well able. He can pick you up. He'll protect you from your enemies. He will lift you up, build you up, stir you up, and cheer you up, and set you on fire, and have you believing that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you because you can. Yes. It takes that faith that's been planted in you to go, I don't care what's happening. I don't care what it looks like. I believe God. Yes. I just read the word that said this, and I believe it, and I'm going to hold on to it. You see, we all have something we've got to hold on to today. Yes. If you're not holding on to Jesus, everything else is sinking sand, and you'll watch it just crumble and fall through your fingers. Yes, you will. If you'll hold on to this right here, oh, yes. it's just solid. Yes, it is. It's better than gold. It's better than platinum. It's better than pearls. It, it's better than anything you'll ever get your hands on to because when you hold on to Jesus, you hold on to that word by faith, it'll never crumble, it'll never falter, and it'll never fail. Amen. God will always come through for you, always. Amen. There's never a time in my life that God has never failed me. Oh, I failed him. I couldn't, there's more, I couldn't count that high. I, I, yeah, I failed God. I ain't going to tell him how many times. Yeah. But he looked down and he said, son, I still love you. Come on. He just, yes, ah! he just yes. throws them arms out and said, come on. I know you did. Yes. And I know you will. But come on. Come yeah. on. I love you. Woo! Now let's try to get back to where we was. Now, now Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, you know, when we begin to pray, the Bible tells us to pray. When we begin to pray, the Bible tells us to pray. Do you know prayer is one of the biggest faith-based things that you'll do? When we pray to a God that we can't see, and, and a lot of times you have to admit, we may not hear God when we think we hear God. And sometimes we hear God when we don't think we hear God. It's because we're not in the Word enough. The more you stay in the Word, and the closer you stay to God, you'll hear Him. And you'll, He said, my sheep know my voice. Won't pay attention to a strange voice. Your prayer is faith-based. When we pray in the name of Jesus, what are we doing? We're using our faith. We're saying, Jesus, I've come to you because I have a need. Yeah. It don't matter what the need is. Go to God with your needs. He said, come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He said, come to me with every problem, situation, circumstance. Come unto me. Yes. Oh. So when we pray, we are using more faith than we realize. Now, the thing is, when we get up from prayer... We've got to keep that, we've got to stay in that same prayer frame of mind. We ought to get up from prayer happier than we was when we went into prayer. We should know, you see, when we went to God with our prayer and we laid out our petitions before God, 1 John 5, when we get up, we should be rejoicing and be happy knowing, 
I went to the only one that's able to answer me. I went to the only one that's able to heal me. I went to the only one that's able to help me get my bills paid, help me bring joy and peace and rest. I went to the only one who can handle my children when I can't handle my children. Do you understand? I went to the one that matters, and when I come up from prayer, I ought to be the happiest man on earth. I, you ought to come up from prayer in faith going, my prayer's answered, my God heard me. Yes, sir. And now I expect to see a change Amen. in my life, in my circumstances, in the people that I prayed for. And the people that I prayed for, I expect them to pray and see a change in their life and the people that they prayed for. Come on now, man. Yeah. We must believe God. We must believe this word. We must believe that he is, the Bible says that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek, it, seek after him. Go after God. Yeah, with, with this all diligence, with all yeah. strength, go after him. <laughs> like he's the only thing that matters because he really is. Yes, sir. If you don't have God, nothing else matters. With God, he can bring all things unto you that pertain to life and godliness in Christ Jesus. Come on, we must go to God and believe He'll meet and believe He will meet and supply all of our needs. Uh-huh. Y'all back up with me, Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 19. Let me just, I got this in my mind. I can quote it, but you know I just love to read the word. Yes. Read the word. Lord. Put the word, let me, let me get your circumstances and write them down, okay? Whatever mm-hmm. problems you got, write them down over here and then get the word over here. Yeah. You said, here's the problem, but here's the answer. You understand, here's the problem, but here's the answer. Yeah. When the problem shows up, I, here's an answer right here. Uh-huh. Do you have a need? I'm going to give you an answer to your need this very moment. You'll find in Philippians 4, chapter, verse 19, now Paul is talking to the people at Philippians, the Philippians at church. But my God shall supply all your need. Yeah according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Did, did he just not say he would supply all? You need, he, 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 let me make sure I'm reading that right. No, my God will supply some. No, no, no. But my God shall supply all. My God, Paul's God, the one that he met on the road to Damascus, the one that shook him and rattled him to the core yeah, and sent him out on fire like shoot number nine riding right. dino Mike. Do you understand? Look and read, study the life of Paul and look how he used to be. And he had an encounter with Jesus and look where he is after that. He says, you know, I believe Paul, every time Paul's mouth opened up, he spoke with a boldness. I don't believe there was no doubt in that man's, in his heart, in his, in his mind, in his spirit. I believe when Paul spoke, he was fully persuaded that the words he spoke were the words of God, were the words of Jesus. He just got through telling them, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I want to know something. Is there a need in heaven? No, no, there's no need in heaven. Is Jesus well able is there lack in heaven? Is there, is there any lack in heaven? There don't have to be lack in our lives. What we've got to do is stand up and rise up in the word, believing that God will answer his word. Yes, I don't, look at Joseph. Joseph could, have, they don't t- Joseph could have just jumped out of that pit and ran, and he could have fought. The Bible didn't say anything like that. Look what he did. In all things, I believe Joseph held on to that dream. I believe Joseph knew that God gave him that dream. And I believe he said, you know what? This is going to come to pass. Uh I don't understand why I'm in prison. I don't understand why that woman wants me. I don't understand why my brothers did what they did to me. But I know that my God will work all things to glory for his. God will take, if we'll just stand in faith and hold on to that word, we have been promised. I know I'm going to heaven. Yeah. You understand, it doesn't matter what happens between the time I got saved and the time I get to heaven. I know where I'm headed. Yes. My faith is such that I will wake up one day as my eyes close in death here. They'll wake up there. Do you know who the first one I'm going to see? His name is Jesus. He is the Christ. 
call upon the name of the Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name yeah. of the Lord shall yeah. be saved. Yeah. If he's able to save you, he's able to supply you. Yeah. Do you think God will call you to do something and not give you the necessary tools to do it with? You don't think he'll pay your life? Well, he got you saved and he can't do that for you? Come on. He snatched you out of hell and got you a home in heaven, but he can't do the little bitty things that we yeah, think are so on. major in between? Right. We freak out over just stuff. Yeah. It's no big deal. That's right. Go to God with it. Amen. Look at here. Now, let me. I got, I'm about out of time or something. I've got to tell you. Now, I, I want to show you some faith here. You know, everybody has seen the movie, um, The Ten Commandments. Yul Brenner, Charlton Heston. You know, when they get there, they've, done, they've left Egypt. Oh, and by the way, when they left Egypt, there wasn't a feeble one among them, and they were rich. They went around, and the Egyptians started giving them gold and silver and all manner of precious things. They come out better than they went in. We saw the movie, everybody's seen it. When Moses stretched his hand out, sea parted just like that, but that's not what happened. Come on. Exodus 14, verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. Here's the three words I want you to get. All that night. Yes. It didn't just happen like that. Listen, excuse me. They had a sea over here. They had an army over here. They're in the middle with no other place to go. And they're watching this. Moses did this and nothing happened. Come on, huh? And then they looked and they said, well, there's a little water gone. Mm. They're looking back at that enemy. And look, have you ever done that? Have you ever looked at the enemy and looked up here going, I see a little light. Yeah, come on. And then they looked again, and a little more water's gone. All that night, it took God on purpose all that night. He said, listen, I will deliver you. Have faith and watch and see the glory of God manifest yeah. in your life. Lord. Today, you, we must all that night, weeping may endure for a night, but what's the rest of that verse? But joy yes. will come in the morning. Yes. Is that not what the word says? Yes, all that night, they stood there and they watched. And they watched that water a little at a time, a little at a time. And you know what the Bible says? They went over on dry ground. Yeah. That sea's been there for millions of years, and then within 24 hours, within 12 hours, it had parted, and the ground was dry. Yeah. It takes six months for that ground to dry without it. Yeah. Come on. But God, we've got to rise up in these days. We must believe the Lord. Yes. Now, y'all get ready. Deborah and Steve Collins are going to bring some gospel music. Drop your cares and pick up Jesus. Yeah. Okay? Amen. Stick in this word. God will do what God said he would do. You be patient, and I am expect to hear praise reports. Guys, I love you. I'll see you in a week.
I'll make Jesus my all and all. Yes, From now on, when I'm in trouble, on His name, I'm going to call Him. Thank you, Brother Steve and Sister Deborah, for that song. I tell you, I, I love Brother Steve and Sister Deborah. Uh, uh, they, they go to church with me. And Brother Steve's been up here and preached for us before. I tell you, I'm, I'm going to get him back sometime, too. He works a second shift job, and it's kind of, I mean, he works a first shift job. It's kind of hard for him to, to get by here, but we're going to get him back sometime or another. But I enjoy their singing, enjoy, the, you know, what, what they do for the Lord. He preaches and and, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're fixing up a, a time that uh, down here on, on a Saturday, some Saturdays, we're going to go down here to the uh, trade day down here. I, but, but probably most of you know about it here in this area. Uh, we're going to go down to trade day, and we're going to have a little service down there. We're going to rent us a booth down there. And, you know, people go down and rent us a booth and, and sell stuff, so we're just going to go down and rent us a booth and tell people about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. I tell you what, it's so good to be a born-again child of the living God today. If you got your Bibles, and I know you do, <laughs> I know you got them, I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter... Let me see where we're at here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want to start with verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And the Bible says, But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travel upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief now listen to what he's saying ye are the children of the light and the children of day we are not the we are not of the night nor of the darkness therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, yeah. that, that faith there that Brother Larry was talking about, yeah. put it on the breastplate of faith and love and for, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Uh -huh. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with them. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also we do. You see, the Bible says right there, Paul was telling the Thessalonian church, he was saying that we are the light of the world. We are the, we live in the light. We don't live in the darkness. You know why? Because once we've accepted Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I am the light. You see, when Jesus Christ is the light of the world today. And the Bible says that we're supposed to be the light of this world as we walk around. We're supposed to walk around as a light, not in the darkness. We don't live in the darkness. The devil lives in the darkness. We don't live in the, you 
do the things that you're ashamed of in the dark, but my friend, we are of the light. And I'm glad today to know that I'm a born again child of God, a light to somebody. Amen. I want to be a light to somebody that I can show somebody the right way to go, the right way that they need to live. My friend, let me tell you something. It's the light of the world that's going to take us all the way to heaven. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be a child of the light. I'm glad that I'm of the light. And I'm not, you say, well, Brother Ronnie, how do you be a child of the light? You just accept Jesus as your Savior. Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. He's the light. He's the one that we got to. If you get Jesus, you've got the light. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. You see, John the Revelator, he gave us a little glimpse of what heaven was like. You see that when Jesus said that we are the light and we are the children of the light, here's what that we've got to look forward to. We're not of the darkness now. I'm not talking about the ones that's not saved. I'm not talking about the ones that's of the darkness because you do the things in the dark. My friend, I'm talking about this is what we got to look forward to. John the Revelator said in Revelation chapter 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. He said, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, adorned for her husband, a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with them and they shall be with them. My people and God himself shall be their God. I mean, I'm talking about, he said, God, God himself shall be their God, amen, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain nor former things that passed away, because the former things has passed away, my friend, there'll be no more sickness, glory be to the Lamb of God, there'll be no more death, glory be to the Lamb of God, I'll never have to go to the funeral home when we get there, glory be my friend, because there'll be no death because Jesus will be there. I'll never have to turn the light switch on and turn on the light. Amen. Why? Because Jesus is the light. He's the one there. He's the one that's the light of the world, my friend. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that is the light of the world today. Praise be to the Lamb of God. We must be the light of the world today. Hallelujah. Come on in here, Brother Elrod. Lord God, I need somebody to shout with me. Praise be to the Lamb of God. He said, and I'll be, he said, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, because the former things have passed away. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory, I'm just about ready to go on and be in that place. Glory be to the Lamb. I'm going to tell you something. God has something in store for us. Glory be to God. And he said unto me, it is done. Come on now. It is done. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. If that right there don't crank your tractor, your tractor's got a dead battery. Glory be to the Lamb of God. If that don't light you fire, your fireplace is one out, my friend. Let me tell you something. It's going to be the God's way. And it's going to happen the way God said it's going to happen. It's going to be just like he said. And one of these days, Jesus is going to step out on that cloud. One of these days, Jesus is going to step out on that cloud. And I don't know about you, and I don't know where you stand with the Lord, but my friend, oh, hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Brother Right is going to be with him today. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Glory to God. I just want to shout. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Let me tell you something. He said, he that overcometh. Huh? Yeah. To him that overcometh shall inherit all things. He didn't say you might inherit them. He didn't say, oh, maybe you inherit them. He said you shall inherit them. Positive statement. Yeah. Gonna happen. That's you right. shall inherit all things. He didn't say some things. He didn't say part of the thing. He said you shall inherit all things that God has in store for his people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Praise be to the Lamb of God. Now listen to what verse 22 says. He said, and I saw, I saw no temple there. Now we're talking about heaven. Yeah. We're talking about the new earth. That, I mean, we're talking about the new heavens and the new earth here. And he said, he said, I saw no temple there in the Lord uh -huh. in for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. There it is. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> glory. Woo, glory. Now you know why he said I am the light. Amen. Yeah. There ain't no buildings there. Glory be. There's a building there, all right, but it ain't built with hands. Come on. Ooh, Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a spiritual building. He said, and the city had no need of the sun. <laughs> Come on. Glory. The city had no need of the sun, neither for the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Yeah, Jesus. Woo, glory. Who's the Lamb? Who's the Lamb? Jesus is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the light. Amen. Friend, we're still talking about the light. We're still talking about Jesus Christ the right. We're still talking about Jesus, the light of this world. And he said, that's what we needed to be, that we need to be the light of this world. Now, let me tell you something, my friend. Let me go to you now. I want to tell you something that what the, uh, the Apostle Paul said over in, over in uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, uh, over, yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said, This know also that in the last days perilous times. Now listen to me. Now I'm going to talk to you about the darkness. Now I'm going to talk to you about what the world's in. Amen. I'm not talking about the children of the light now. The children of the light, we don't live in this. Amen. We live in this world. We're in this world. But we got a high power. Amen. We got a high power that's up there. And his name is called Jesus Christ the righteous. The apostle Paul said this know also that in the last days, and in the last days that there shall perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. I don't even have to comment on that one, do I? For men shall be lovers of them own selves, covetors, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Yeah. It's here. It's here. Brother Elrod, it's here. Let me tell you something, friend. If we've ever lived in the last days that he's talking about right here, that the perilous times will come, we're in those last days. But thanks be unto God. If you're a child of God, you don't got to worry about all this. You ain't got to worry about who's the next president. You ain't got to worry about who's the governor. You ain't got to worry about what's going on over here, what's going to happen over here. Because, my friend, it's going to happen just like God said it's going to happen. And there's nobody going to be able to do anything about it because it's going to fall just like God said it's going to fall. Amen. And it's going to go just like God said it's going to go. And my friend, we're living in those days whenever the we've got proud. Yeah. I mean, we're so proud. Oh, we can't tell nobody about Jesus. We're too proud. They might be, they might think bad of us, or they might. Think, oh, that's not cool, brother Ronnie. Don't tell them about it, my friend. Let me tell you, the coolest thing you can ever get a hold of will be Jesus, my friend. You need Jesus as your personal savior, and if you don't know Jesus, my friend, the coolest thing you'll ever get it will be Jesus Christ the righteous because he is the only way that we can go to heaven today. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Lamb of God. He said there'll be traitors, headly, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Uh -huh. Amen. We're talking about the darkness now, ain't we? Yeah. We're talking about living in the darkness. They that, they that live in the night, they that go in the night, they're drunken in the night. They get drunk, they get drunk in the night, and they, they live, the, they do the drugs, they do all the things. They're living for the devil, my friend. They're living in the darkness, and they're lovers of them own selves. Yeah. Love pleasure more than they love God. Uh -huh. Friend, one of these days, this, uh, the ple you see, the Bible says you can have pleasure for a season. Yeah, you do. You have pleasure for us. There's, there's seasons that you have pleasure. You can have pleasure for a season, but let me tell you something, my friend. When you get joy, come on, come on now. Yeah. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord. When you get the joy of the Lord, yeah. there it is. it's not for a season. Huh? 
Come on. It's not for a seed. Now, you can have that pleasure of the world out there for a seed. For a little while, you can have it. I mean, you can have that pleasure. But my friend, when you get the joy of the Lord right down on the inside of you, when you get that joy down on the inside of your heart, my friend, I'm talking about joy unspeakable. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pour out a blessing on you that you can't obtain. My friend, I don't know about you, but I want that blessing. I want that blessing that I can't obtain, my friend. It's God just pour it out on me. And my friend, if you don't want your blessing, just tell God to give it to me. Hallelujah. Glory. I'll take it. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I want that blessing. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for every blessing that he's ever given me. I thank God for every blessing that he's going to give me. I thank God that he pours his love right now down on me. And you know what? That whenever you're in times of trouble and whenever you're in problems and whenever things are so bad that it seems like that you just can't get there, you just can't get where you need to be, my friend, just turn it all over to God. Just say, God, I need you. God, I need some help. Nothing wrong with calling on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, my friend. I call on him every day. I don't know how many times a day. Amen. Sometimes when you get in trouble and you ain't got time to kneel down and pray, all you got to do is just say, Jesus. Jesus. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're doing and he knows what you're going through and he knows you don't have time to say that prayer. But all you got to do is just say, Jesus. Bring Jesus on the scene and Jesus will take care of whatever is going on. Hallelujah. I think a lot of times... uh, Whenever that we're in problems, whenever that we're in troubles, and whenever we got things going on, and I think a lot of times about sometimes you know you you, you might just have a car wreck or something, or you might just be uh, be be sliding around in your car or something, and and you you don't have time to say, oh wait a minute, Lord, let me pray. But you know what? You got time to just say. You don't even have to say it out loud. Just breathe it. Say Jesus. Jesus is always at that name. In that name, all power in heaven, in earth, and under the earth is given unto that name. All power. He has the power. Whenever we call upon him, he's got the power. When we say Jesus, the problem must leave. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I claim it for Jesus Christ. I claim my family for Jesus. I claim my friends for Jesus. I claim this one over here for Jesus. I claim them for Jesus. My friend, if you're listening to this broadcast, I claim you for Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. But thanks be unto God. He said that we'll be, he said that they'll be having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, he said, turn away. Listen, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We are so smart. Our technology has got so, it's so, our technology is so beyond me, Brother Elrod, that I can't, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand. I never did understand how you could pick a phone up and, and dial a number and talk to somebody way over in Washington, D.C. or way over in, uh, way over in, uh, across the, uh, the waters or so I, I, I still can't comprehend that how that we can do that but my friend let me tell you something our technology has got us to where we can do all of these things and we, we're ever learning we still keep learning and we just keep learning but we're never you're, we're getting, the more we learn and the smarter we get the further away we get from God yeah. Come on, he said ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth you see my friend We can learn all we can learn. We can be as smart as we want to be. But my friend, if you're not smart enough to realize that you need Jesus as your personal Savior, you will not go to heaven. You will not make it. If we don't if, we, if you don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, friend, you'll not go to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. They said, No man come to the Father. But by me, friend, I urge you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I urge you, 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 you find you an altar, call upon the name of the Lord, let Jesus in your heart, and until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. And what the world.